Hello and welcome to the Death Battle React, where OBS wants to be a dick. I have a goofy cat, and we're going to witness Cora get her self-demolished by an Omega level mutant. That's right, I'm on Team Storm for this, and if you idiots out there think that my name came from the X-Men chick, no it didn't. It, it really didn't. Because there's, let's be real, there's a lot of characters that can be named Storm. Like, let's see, fan characters can have the name Storm. Even official characters can have the name Storm. Two examples, X-Men and Sonic. So, yeah, that, that did not come from any of those. Anyways, enough me blabbering about why I didn't, where the name of my character comes from. But anyway... Let's see Korra get herself demolished by Storm from the X-Men, shall we? And, and yes, this will probably be finally no longer a loss. Because I've already suffered... Let's see here. Blake being my first loss. Steven Universe, second. Third, Macho Man. Fourth, Alucard. And fifth, Akuma. I've already suffered five losses. So, let's get into this, shall we? Want to see the original video? will be in the description. Avatar Korra, the master of all four elements. Storm, yeah, the right. X-Men's goddess of the storms. Weather, the building blocks of our natural uh, world are nothing but not tempestuous and you unpredictable. Suck at that. Which means you gotta be some kind of badass to control them. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Avatar A. Savior of the world, uniter of four nations, destroyer of cabbages. But like all avatars, after decades of service, he passed away. Humanity would have to move forward and prepare his next reincarnation to take up his mantle. But who could fill Aang's shoes? Her name was Korra. Wiz, who is that? Did you leave the door open again? Deuces, gents. Uh, unlike her carefree predecessor, the hot-headed, obstinate Korra was an Avatar prodigy from day one. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! While Aang struggled to accept his role in the world, Korra never wanted to be anything else. Not only is she an expert hand-to-hand -hand fighter on her own, as a bender, Korra can manipulate the natural world around her through martial arts. And as the Avatar, she is the only living being who can bend all four elements at once. Water, earth, fire, air, and you. Straight from the Southern Water Tribe, Korra can control tendrils of water. Of course, you had a freaking Captain Planet reference. Huge tsunamis. I think they're the trying to get Captain Planet into fires. death battle. Looking at this, I'm surprised they haven't yet. What did it take to submerge it? He had to move over 35 million metric tons of water. And since Korra is a reincarnation of Aang and every past avatar, she should be just as powerful. With earthbending, Korra can heave big-ass boulders around, shape and control metal, and even tear apart the ground beneath their enemy's feet. Kinda like when her avatar ancestor, Kiyoshi, broke off a chunk of a continent, dragged it across a bay, and basically just created a new island named after herself. Queen shit. By measuring the size of the island to get its mass, and the size of the bay to get the distance Kiyoshi dragged it, displacing this much rock would require an energy over 21 gigatons of TNT. That's almost 15 times more energy than the entire world's nuclear arsenal detonating at the same time. With firebending, Korra can fire blasts of, well, fire, jet into the sky like a rocket. Flyer staff, like earthbending, waterbending, airbending, firebending, energy bending, avatar state. Yeah, this is. However, her final element was completely <laughs> different. Due to its inherently zen, free flowing nature, Korra struggled at first to master airbending. But like all good prodigies, she figured it out anyways. With air bending, Korra can shoot powerful gusts of wind, fly around on tornadoes, and create a cute little air scooter. She used this element to defeat the bloodbender Amon, who was fast enough to dodge lightning. He is not the only one. Zuko and Iroh have caught and dodged lightning as well, and Iroh even caught one from the sky. The leader of a lightning bolt moves at 60,000 meters per second. 
Comparing the distance Amon moved relative to the bolt, he must have been moving over 200 times the speed of sound. Yeah, this Kora's Kora abilities aren't going to be enough for Storm, but it's unavoidable at this point. The, bridge between the, mortal and spirit worlds. the spirit world is a separate plane of reality, and Korra is stronger while she's physically there. Her direct connection isn't coincidence. She and every avatar before her are fused with the spirit of light, Rava. Every time the Avatar <laughs> dies and reincarnates, Rava searches out the spirit to bond with their new body, a staple of Hindu and Buddhist cosmology. I've done a lot of research into reincarnation, which I'll demonstrate today with Boomstick and this anvil. Wait, whoa, whoa. Now, the Avatar is usually reborn into a different nation, but I've set this up so Boomstick will reincarnate into the nearest vessel, this identical clone body. Hey, Wiz! Hey, feel buddy! Why are you doing me? Where'd my banana go? Cut off his leg and everything. Speaking of messing with your soul, Cora can remove or restore your bending, bring her past lives for advice, and tap into the kick-ass Avatar State. The Avatar State massively boosts Cora's raw bending power, turning her into effectively a demigod and the de facto most powerful being on the planet, if she wasn't already. Despite that, Cora's no stranger to failure. She was severed from her connection to the past Avatars and was almost killed while in the Avatar State, which would have ended her cycle of reincarnation entirely. That last brush with death left her physically and emotionally crippled for years. Even after physical therapy, her fiery spirit struggled to reignite. Korra's entire identity was wrapped up in being the Avatar, all the way from day one. And the biggest trials she had to face were when her place in the world was challenged. Would everyone be better off without an Avatar? Or bending at all. But Korra's nothing if not one hell of a fighter. No matter what life threw at her, she always got back up to kick ass. Korra once blocked an energy blast from a giant spirit cannon, which created this massive crater in the center of Republic City, and almost killed everyone. Taking a look at the width and depth of this crater, and assuming it was all oh boy. Korra must have held back a blast Again, worth almost I am unfamiliar with Korra. I didn't watch much shit. of it. And during harmonic convergence, Korra tapped into enough spirit energy to turn into a giant kaiju and battle the dark avatar Unalak for the fate of the world. Wiz, I told Seriously? you, talk about season two. Okay, one was cool. And from taking down anarchist revolutionaries to fascist empires, Korra proved herself as an avatar worthy of her forebearers. With her teammates Mako and Bolin, teachers like Tenzin and Toph, and badass girlfriend Asami by her side, there was nothing she couldn't do. Queen shit? Queen shit. Come on, little girl. Give me your best shot. Hmm. Yeah, that's not gonna save you. Boomstick, do you know what happens to a person who's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else? You got it. Do you know what happens to white-haired mutants whose parents are killed by a plane crash? They become badass weather witches. After Aurora Monroe's parents were that, she was forced to fend for herself on the streets of Cairo under the tutelage of Ahmed El Jabbar. Yep, this is the part I was looking for. Doing it for a so she took off a I, I, I really knew if it alone. was Korra vs. Ray, I would have sided with Korra right off the bat. Boy, the same way that this is Storm we're talking about. An Omega Map leveled mutant. Go ahead. I'm yeah, doing a reaction! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homo superior, or mutants, are an offshoot of regular humans. They possess the X As I was saying, on the 23rd chromosome that effectively she grants interrupted them me super again. This is an Omega leveled mutant. Way stronger than Wolverine. Way stronger than Cyclops. But it's a lottery. You could end up like old Beach. She scaled yeah. to Harold's. Or you could end up like Aurora and possess complete control over the weather itself while being super hot. Unlike Beak. Beak! No, no! For all she knew, she was a goddess sent straight from heaven. And that's exactly what the local tribes thought when she arrived in her ancestral Kenyan homeland. Aurora's mutant gene allows her to psionically manipulate the atmosphere, capable of summoning a hurricane with less than a conscious thought. When she does feel like using conscious thoughts, something Wiz tells me I struggle with, Aurora can create storms that cover the entire Earth. Her weather manipulation isn't just powerful, but precise. She can call upon massive tidal waves, conceal herself in fog, and even generate localized blizzards cold enough to freeze lava. She can summon bolts of lightning, even ones that are continents away, or generate electricity inside your brain. 
And she wants Zap Cyclops with enough lightning to restart an artificial sun called the Ring of Fire, a name that reminds me of the morning after Taco Tuesday. Encircling the planet Polamachus, the Ring there, of Fire provided Deadpool. all the same energy as a regular with all your but her tacos. element is probably wind. With it, she can blow people away with tornadoes, suck the air out of a person's lungs, and generate enough lift to fly. She once flew fast enough to reach the edge of Earth's atmosphere from ground level in just a few seconds. By measuring the angle and size of the Earth to get the distance and estimating a time frame of about five seconds, Aurora had to have flown at 4,000 times the speed of sound. She can even manipulate solar winds to fly through space. Unlike winds on Earth, which are just the movement of air molecules through the atmosphere, solar winds are streams of charged particles, mostly electrons and protons, ejected from the sun. Almost as crazy as how she can breathe in the vacuum of space. She creates a mini atmosphere around herself by gathering, um, stray hydrogen atoms. Atoms, those are like really small last time I checked. Are these writers just giving her whatever powers they want now? How is that weather? Aurora's abilities apply to any atmospheric conditions, whether they be in outer space or alternate dimensions. Essentially, anything even remotely considered weather. Man, I wish I had crazy writers giving me random superpowers just because it's funny. That'd be awesome. Well, anyways, I'm gonna go use my rocket hands I've always had to get my beer out the fridge. Away! <laughs> Perhaps I have several questions though, to is where to the hell Blue Stick got the rocket pseudo gloves. Sixth sense. Aurora literally sees atmospheric patterns and energy as colors, with the world as her canvas. She's so good with it, she could track a jet flying over New York while she was fighting the Shadow King in Wakanda. That's on the other side of the planet. Yeah, no wonder everyone thought she was a goddess. She is. Aurora enjoyed all the That's worship because she's in the level until mutant. the day she was contacted by an American. Charles Xavier with an interesting proposal. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Join the X-Men! Oh, brief, please! They were eaten by this living island. It's a long story, but we're short stem. Xavier founded the X-Men as a seriously reference the Godfather. Attempt to mend race relations between Homo sapien and Superior through non-violent means. Because what better way to teach kids in the 60s about the civil rights movement than with a bunch of good-looking lily white teenagers with superpowers from upstate New York? Feeling she had spent enough time blessing the rains down in Africa, Aurora agreed and was assigned the code name Storm. And she more than earned the spot. She's proven Made herself ready to wield the old gear. Little war against the Indians. And even survived a blast from her own land. This is impressive considering the Lightning's powerful enough to match with Polaris, who once used her powers to punch through Earth's crust all the way to the planet's core. Assuming she pulverized yeah. the cylinder of Earth all the way down, she, she had to is an Omega level mutant. Of TNT. She once beat the mutant Callisto in unarmed combat, and Callisto has apparently mastered every single martial art known to man. Despite her unbelievable power, Storm has trained extensively in hand to hand combat. You get it? It also probably didn't hurt that she's fast enough to dodge literal beams of light. Oh, but did you get it though? Nope! And after kicking Callisto's ass, she became the queen of these sewer-dwelling mutants called the Morlocks. She really just couldn't escape being worshipped, could she? Even by grody underground monster people. Well, she later married the Black Panther T'Challa and became queen of Wakanda too, so she really runs the gamut. But even demigods have their Achilles heels. That plane crash from her childhood left her crushed under rubble for days, giving her a bad case of claustrophobia that rears its ugly head every once in a while. But that's not enough to stop this queen. After the departure of Scott Summers, Storm became the leader of the X-Men, because of course she did. And when Jordy LaForge eventually came crawling back the two fought over who would lead the team despite Scott literally being able to shoot death lasers from his eyes storm kicked his ass and even better she didn't even have her powers at the time as it should be because there's no one more devoted to her team than storm is she may be an Omega level mutant but her greatest thank you is her bottomless compassion I've said it That's so many times watch as Aurora's heart of gold quickly turns to ice as she quite literally steals your breath away Testing me, hmm? It's time you remembered why they call me Storm. All right, all time right, to see Cora get her ass kicked. The data through all possibility. It's, time it's obvious. I mean, come on. She's up against an Omega level mutant. There's no way Cora's gonna win. Oh, 
powers are impressive. Hey, it's the X. You lack discipline. It's the uh, the <laughs> X-Men Children of the <laughs> Atom Sprite, Avatar, I think. Master of all elements. You want to see for yourself? Of course, Avatar. I'll show you what an X-Men can do. Yeah, uh, Sora, good luck, you're dead. <laughs> like I said, good luck, Tora, you're fucking dead. <laughs> there's, there's no way you're gonna win. Not a bender. She's an Omega level mutant. Spirit of Storms. <laughs> exactly. Bam! You fought nobly, Avatar. Queen shit myself! This fight wasn't totally straightforward. Korra can dominate most fighters pretty easy with her raw bending power and martial arts skills, especially with the Avatar state. Not even some of the best benders on the yeah. planet like Zaheer and Kuvira could Finally. stand up to her at her best. However, I did not get a single loss this time. Her powers, she found herself outmatched Good Storm's freaking skill, god, that was annoying. Having five force. losses. For instance, Storm's massively hypersonic flight and ability to sense and control weather across five the planet meant she could so always annoying. fight safely from a distance. Korra's trained in martial arts from I, birth, but everyone could agree that Korra was already utterly fucked hand -hand. from the get-go. Storm's experience with the X-Men and defeating Callisto meant she could keep up. While Korra may have fought people who can dodge lightning, Storm can dodge literal beams of light. 
Even yeah, if way faster than light. Exiting the atmosphere, she'd still be nearly 20 times faster than Korra. Korra did have access to elements like fire and earth that Storm didn't. If she somehow found out about Storm's claustrophobia, she could theoretically trap her in some rocks to exploit it. But Storm would be more than powerful enough to just break out. Her lightning was strong enough to match Polaris, who punched a hole in the earth all the way down to its core. Yeah, ultimately, Storm was just way more powerful. Remember that planet-sized storm she created? Well, I know clouds are lighter than air, but those are a shit ton of clouds and need a lot of work to move around. By measuring their volume, and the speed at which they moved, the energy storm needed for this would be over 500 exatons of TNT, yeah. about 250 times more powerful than what Korra could output. And considering this is the same woman who was powerful enough to reignite an artificial star, results like that aren't outliers. Even taking the fight to the spirit world wouldn't have helped, considering Storm has manipulated alien weather from outer space and alternate dimensions. She'd have no problem adapting there. And considering Storm's powers are genetic in nature, not spiritual, Korra would not not be able to depower her with energy bending. Yeah, none of that is counting the ways Storm could have ended the fight right off the bat, like sucking the air right out of Korra's lungs or generating a lightning storm in her brain. Korra was a tenacious, unrelenting opponent, but Storm's massive range, precise control, deadly That's skill, exactly what she did. She just power destroyed her, her brain with lightning. Don't get bent out of shape. Korra just couldn't weather the storm. The winner is Storm. For once. That wasn't a bad pun. Thanks for watching this episode. That actually if you want wasn't a bad pun. You should check out the new All right. Of Genlock on HBO Max. We already Starring know what's coming. Dakota Fanning and David Tennant. <laughs> in a animated series inspired by Mecha Anime. Soon we will witness which fan base will get more salty. Madara versus Aizen. So yeah. Finally! For once, I didn't get a loss. Ugh, that was the most annoying thing I've ever had to deal with. But yeah! I finally got a win after all five losses. Ugh, that was the most glorious freaking thing. Now, I'm not gonna choose who wins between Madara or Aizen. I will, however, be laughing which side of the fan base gets salty. That's what I want to see. That's what I'm more concerned about. I'm not curious about who will win, who will lose, and what my win-loss streak will be on this one. I'm more curious about who will get more salty. So, that's that the video. Well, until then, you can.